Hi, once again to our televiewers, our stakeholders, our supporters, our dear supporters, and the faculty, staff, students of Foundation University, as well as the general community of Dumaguete City, and of course, the whole world. This is your regular Thursday habit once again. I, Greyhound, the official weekly television talk show of Foundation University. My name is Cecilia Nobe, and as always, Thursdays, as I have mentioned, has become a habit for all of us, and I hope... Uh, for you as well. So for tonight's episode, friends, we have invited two of our colleagues at Foundation University. They handle a particular program or a department in the university and they are here to, among others, talk about their program trusts, their activities, as well as their plans. But let me first introduce them to all our televiewers. Immediately to my left is the program chair of the Department of Fine Arts. This is under the College of Arts and Sciences and we call it as well the Department of Architecture and Fine Arts in the person of Miss Sandra Palomar Juan. Hi Miss Sandra and welcome to iGreyhound. Hello, good evening. Yes, thank you for accommodating our invitation. Your first time of course on iGreyhound. Yes, yes. So yes. no worries, no worries. <laughs> we will have a long uh, conversation. Thank you very much Miss Sandra. And beside Miss Sandra here is Yes, I'd like to call him as one of the founding founders or founding instructor of uh, the depart of the program or of the department in the person of Mr. Babu Wenceslao. He has a long name, actually, Babu. Uh, let me allow you to say what your My real name is. My full name is Antonio Mario Alunan Wenceslao. Okay. It's a very long name. Yes, that's a mouthful, <laughs> but we have always known him here, at least in Dumaguete City, as Mr. Babu Wenceslao. And this is not his first time on iGreyhound. We have had him here in previous episodes. So, yes, welcome once again, uh, Miss Sandra and uh, Sir Babu. Sir Babu, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miss Sandra, I'd like to ask Miss Sandra first, being the program chair of the Department of Fine Arts, I know that you are bringing with you a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experience as well. And since you have been to many places uh, outside of the country, as well as your experiences, what uh, new things do you intend to bring in to the department? New? New or whatever it may be in your well, mind? Probably in perspective of Dumaget uh, Tenyos. Yeah would be to bring in uh, practice and also practitioners from outside of the region. Uh, perhaps also uh, an, instruction, an instructional uh, method of uh, making our program student-centered. <laughs> student-centered in a, in a way that the students also reach out outside of the region yeah. yes. and uh, so we are currently reviewing the program as it has been uh, developed by mm -hmm. Sir Babu yeah. and how we can uh, adapt yeah. to that program so that we can focus on the needs of the students. Yes. How has, uh, this is something that I've always been curious about and I think I may have asked this of Babu uh, some time ago, how has the art scene uh, changed if it has over the years perhaps in the philippines as a whole and then maybe we can take a look uh, at it from the context of the dumaguete art scene as well uh, one thing i can say is that uh, the art scene has become all the more fluid mm -hmm. especially with our experience during the pandemic that fluidity requires also that uh, we're not physically moving, but we're actually moving uh, spaces, but in our own physical spaces. I think that's a different way of working that I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, used to or used to. Yes, before, um, and I think this is also what our students at the moment in the program 
are experiencing that we have to address. Okay. So you came in to a Foundation University uh, in what year again, Miss Sandra? In 2019, okay. thanks to the invitation yes. of uh, Sir Baru. Right. right, so that was uh, immediately before the pandemic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Before yeah. The okay. pandemic. yeah, the year before the pandemic, then 2020 came mm -hmm. and then uh, there was the pandemic. Uh, very quickly, did you also go into online uh, distance learning for fine arts? subjects? Actually, I wasn't so surprised okay. that this was needed because I already uh, was practicing oh, okay. that type yeah. of uh, instruction before coming into yes, the foundation. Yes, yes. My experience of working abroad meant that wherever I am, yeah. I'm actually still connected okay. with uh, people, collaborators yeah. that are in the other part of the world. Yes. So when the pandemic happened, uh, the only thing I had to really uh, deal with was how to teach the fine arts online. Mm -hmm. Because before that, I was teaching arts management. And I still do. I still okay. teach yeah. arts management. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest challenge was to translate the classroom, which used to be very, very tactile, mm -hmm to an online platform yeah. and how to um, develop that activity with our students. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm listening to you and I can simply just imagine how you do it, no? Because mm -hmm. after all, fine arts, painting in particular, and other uh, genres of fine arts, for example, would really need for you to touch something, as you mm -hmm. had mentioned, tactile and, and so on. But uh, perhaps this is really a challenge that most of us are still into until today perhaps yeah i'll, I'll, I'll get back to miss sandra and uh, uh babu miss sandra mentioned about uh, the pandemic when artists not only artists but uh, people in general were cooped up inside their homes and doing their own thing and it's most especially artists because we're featuring the department of fine arts so how how was the 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 situation then as a student, uh, no, as a professor, as, as a teacher, and then also as an artist who you, you also have exhibits and so on. Uh, like uh, basically what, what, like what Sandra said, uh, it was not very difficult for us to adapt to like, uh, uh, like an online, like yeah. an open uh, way of teaching because, uh, you, you know, the studio arts is basically uh, something that that it's 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 a discipline that you also have to practice on your own. So a lot of a lot of it is actually left on also on the students. So they need to practice on their own. So it was very easy for us to also adapt to like an online platform of teaching. So academically, it was not that that difficult. You know? So uh, we just had to of course uh, set up the communications, the networks, and all of that. But basically, it all went really well in the last uh, two years, 2000, 2021, yeah. until uh, yeah. just pretty recently. Yes, yes. Uh, but in terms of creativity, um, okay. a lot of things have actually happened, you know. Uh, okay. Of course, you had more time. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think um, I did a couple of works also during the, mm -hmm. during the pandemic. So you produced uh, uh, some works as well. Yeah, we mm -hmm. I did, yeah. uh, but locally, even the the, the yes. local art yeah, scene was so. very mm -hmm. prolific, mm -hmm. and uh, the latter part of the pandemic, when things began to ease yeah. a bit, right. uh, a lot of the local artists organized their own shows. And the last uh, 20, 20, 21 right. was I think very productive yes, locally. Yes. There were several just pockets of art exhibitions. Yeah. Uh, you know, like artist group of friends coming up and organizing just small exhibitions and creating alternative yeah. art space all over the city. So I think it, if you look, go around Dumaguete now, you'll be surprised by the number of art of galleries. Art galleries. Yeah. Uh, and this just really happened in the last two years. Right. So the amount of, of creativity, I think, mm -hmm. was I would say exponential, yeah. in a way. Yes, yes, yes. It was, yeah. uh, 
Yeah, Miss Sandra, yeah, you, you want uh, I, something? You have something to add? Yes, mm -hmm. um, that's probably because uh, of that um, difficulty to ex to exhibit mm -hmm. that a lot of the artists were ready to show mm -hmm. and to get together and um, uh, just collaborate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think about two things, no? There was also a, mig a migration mm -hmm. from Manila. From Manila. Of, you mean coming here? Coming creators, here. Yeah. Creative individuals, yeah, creative. Artists, yes. writers, yes. literatures, yes. and so on. Um, Not even from Manila. Uh, and, from, yeah. Actually, yeah. there's there's several expats actually yeah. that are yeah. just keeping it very low key, ah. but yes. and, and, working and here. And coming to Dumaguete, huh? Yes. Okay. Not necessarily Dumaguete, just ah, the province. Members of Yanta, oh. okay. Yeah. Oh. And I yeah. think this also added to the oh. diversity of okay. the artists and the opportunities mm -hmm. that uh, the community could have to develop quickly projects to express and to showcase their art but i must say though if we we should consider also those well because we're in the academia yeah. the the students who came in and decided to still enroll in the middle of the pandemic yes right. and mm -hmm. i only recently uh, realized that they have a different experience okay. of the art scene mm -hmm. and this uh, experience of the art scene first and foremost is that relationship with us, the professors, and the classroom, meaning they completely do not understand what it is to exhibit or to even create in a space because the space that they had is their uh, intimate private space. Whereas here in school or outside where you exhibit uh, in public, uh, you have a different relationship. So I feel that yes, we made uh, a lot of things. A lot of things happened uh, early this year, and that's why you know so many things are 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 going on because there are a lot of artists who are hungry to to start working. But uh, there's also a population of artists who were um, devastated. Mm -hmm. I would use that word mm -hmm. uh, because. Um, it was uh, perhaps difficult to talk with people, mm. like-minded people. A lot of our students were perhaps in, uh, you know, in, in the family setup, so um, they didn't have peers to talk with. Yeah. In in other words, if you say it is uh, that some artists, no, for that matter, have been or were devastated. Does that mean that they did not have any outlet or or avenue by which they could express themselves? or they were cooped up inside their so-called comfort zone and the pandemic did not allow them to get out of their zones. Mm -hmm. Would that probably be a reason? Probably. I think it, it's both sides both of sides, the spectrum. Yeah. If, uh, I mean, yeah. but I can only probably speak for, <laughs> for, I can only speak for, I mean, the artists that are oh. more productive. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, but I would, be leaning more on the positive side. Locally, I think Dumaguete has really changed. Yes. Uh, you can actually see a level of aesthetic consciousness that's pervasive mm -hmm. in the community. You know, you go around uh, commercial spaces. Yeah. There is that. Uh, there is that sensibility already of of trying to you know like claim space, yeah. uh, beautify space create it in such a way that it's unique you know I mean there is that and and that is that is something that I already see yes. all over Dumaguete and even the neighboring towns yes. you know yes. and I think uh, well yeah I think the fine arts program in, in foundation has as our artists the local yeah. artists has really helped in, in uh, you know elevating that in creating that kind of a culture which is what we need yeah, right and, and spurring the interest perhaps of even mm. individuals who may not have been you know quote and unquote creative in the sense that mm. they would like to produce works mm. or art mm. forms no but but I, I can I can explain it very clearly but perhaps because they have been what motivated mm. uh, by some way or in some way or yes. by individuals perhaps, you can yeah, see then they get out mm. of what they probably did not know they can do. And I know mm. of several individuals mm. who have this 
yun pala, they have pala that innate talent, no? Mm-hmm. But uh, it was discovered later, much later, or they discovered it uh, in themselves. Now, because you are in the academe, we are in the academe, uh, how, how can we spot an artist, for example, now this is coming from a layman's point of view, no? And say that this is a so-called professional work. Do, do you have that in the art scene? The so-called, this is a professional work or something like this work, for example, follows the tenets or the theories, for example, of what we teach to our students in fine arts. Mm. Uh, okay. Kind of hard to, yeah. it's okay. it's difficult, uh, it's difficult to judge a work right there and then. Uh, if you don't know the the backstory, if you don't know the background of the, the artist, also of the artist, it's easy, I guess. It I, it's with contemporary art, it's difficult. Mm-hmm. But with I guess uh, traditional representational art, you could say that it's you know I mean it's very easy to tell when when a, when a, a painting, for instance, an artwork is really well made. Okay. You know, so yeah. we can easily judge its technicality, yes, okay. the level of execution mm-hmm. yeah yes, it's yes. easy so you can you can actually judge it okay. by those standards yeah. but with contemporary art mm-hmm. uh... so that's that's where the, <laughs> the, the line of difference lies perhaps but well, yeah, Sandra. i must say that the foundation university fine arts program has um uh, d- g- has given the baguette a lot of artists alumnus mm-hmm. who remain here and uh, the pandemic i think uh made them think and develop ideas that they didn't have time for because they were working exactly, exactly. Uh, before the pandemic exactly. and perhaps what we can say is that um, their work matured quickly yes. in just two years yes, yes. and uh, this maturity i think it shows itself because we know of at least uh, two alumnas mm-hmm. and who are also uh, teaching at the moment okay. who exhibited uh, recently and um, you can tell with their work that they were able to really give time mm-hmm. and um, the concepts uh, mm-hmm. were uh, completed yeah. thanks to the, the, the mindset that they were in during the pandemic. So, so in other words, if a person perhaps no, is uh, thrust in a particular situation where they may be able to creatively, of course, no, express themselves well and experiment on things that they have not been doing in the past and discover something that they may be good at but which they did not know no? in the first place that they may be good at it, then they can pursue a, a an endeavor or, or an interest or a hobby, like painting, for example. No? Or an idea. Or an idea, or an idea. okay, yes, or, or whatever it may be. No? But during the pandemic, I must say, though, that a lot of the artists resorted to photography. Oh. And I'd like to make that point clear okay. that uh, yeah, it was through photography that not even artists, but us, everybody in general, the public in general, yes, yes. were able to somehow uh, express their anxieties and their intimate uh, spaces out to the world that they couldn't reach out to. Okay. Or their aspirations. And their aspirations. Uh-huh. And yeah. how do they do it? Through photographs. Yes. Photographs, and because yeah. you know, okay. compared to when we were students yeah. <laughs> decades ago, yes, it's yes. thanks to your um, it's smartphone, our, our smartphone. Our smartphone. That technology yeah. has changed. Yes, yeah, you can do so much uh, no? yes, with your yes, smartphones. Yes, yes. yes. When we were students, we had to get the. Uh, uh, an SLR. Yes, 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 yeah, the, an SLR. The, 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 manual SLR, yes, not the yes. digital yes, SLR. Yes, yes. And even the development we of the We had to go yeah. to the dark room, we had to uh, uh, print our own, we uh, had to do contact exactly. prints and all that. Okay. It's very yeah. different now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's an interesting um, insight, no? Uh, individuals who may not have discovered that there's, they're good at it. Well, of course, this is another uh, genre, no? so they go into photography, which of course is a work of art as well. Oh, wow, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And now that we were talking about photography, I attended your project, Udo, mm-hmm. uh, during the Kasadiaan Festival, and it was essentially 
uh, exhibits of photographs mm -hmm. by our students. No, Miss yes. Sandra, yeah, perhaps you can tell our televiewers a little about Project Uno and why Project Uno. Okay. Project Uno is a program that was started by Babu. Okay. And uh, there is also a next project, uh -huh. Project DOS, okay. which happens in the second semester of every year. And these two projects are meant to be uh, events or exhibits, projects that the students uh, make for students. So they put together the pieces. It may reflect also plates that they do in class. Uh, previous exhibitions have been outside of the school uh, in public spaces. This time though, we wanted to begin here in the uh, foundation because uh, we have a space that we're moving into. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I had a project that dealt with photography and I thought that this was the perhaps the easiest uh, medium to put all of these students together under one theme mm -hmm. and uh, one practice. Mm -hmm. And we also have a very good um, photographer who is part of the faculty who was able to give uh, a workshop that immediately got them all together uh, to take or to make, to create images in a very short time. Um, so I thought that adapting that photography festival where the students also uh, created an open call where they also reached out to the faculty to uh, decide on which images would be included in the exhibition uh, and also right now it's still going on but managing the exhibition as well and trying to um, show and uh, sell the images becomes part of the project which for me is uh, a holistic way of uh, engaging them in this practice that they will encounter when they're out of mm -hmm. the schools. So photography is also being taught in the fine arts mm -hmm. program. Yeah. Okay, uh, but much. in what aspect of photography? Because uh, for example, in uh, journalism or in communication, we have uh, what we call as a, something like press photography or photojournalism. So in what aspect of photography do we teach that in fine arts? Uh, it's a, actually it's an elective. Okay. Uh, it's an elective, and I think it's taught together with the uh, broad with the yes, broadcast. Yes, yeah, uh, broadcast communication yes, department. Yes, it yeah. is taught. Right. Yeah, okay. but I think uh, there are uh, courses also within the within okay. the program where if the student decides to uh, specialize. Okay. For instance, in photography, then the instructor will also have to work with him and provide for a program to sort of enhance yeah. or help him facilitate his his photography uh, okay. project okay. or whatever it is that he needs yeah. to learn. Yeah. So there, so in art workshop, for instance, yeah. if he elects to take to use photography as a medium, then again, uh, that is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we tailor fit yes. uh, the uh, that program, that learning program for the student. Yeah. Yes. So so that is according to what the student desires mm -hmm. or or wants. Yes. Not? Okay. It's or, not a speciality yeah. okay. in art photography. Oh. Uh, so it, nothing of that sort, Miss Sandra. Not okay. necessarily, okay. but the basics okay. of photography mm -hmm. is something that has to be taught. Yeah. Yes, and then uh, for their culminating mm -hmm. project, we we understand what uh, uh, direction mm -hmm. he would like to bring photography yeah. to. Mm -hmm. There are other types of uh, you know ways to actually use photography. Mm -hmm. It could be mixed with fashion, right. yes. with food, yes. uh, animation, sports, yes. uh, even underwater photography yes. is a specialty. Yes, okay. yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. right. Uh, you know, very quickly. Um, the, the experience that I got no, uh, watching or, or viewing no, the exhibits on Project Uno, well, 
I have an untrained eye, no? but uh, mm. I appreciate beauty, you know, art forms and so on. Uh, there was a fin, well, of course, there were photographs, no? but from afar, uh, somehow I could see them as something like a painting as well. Mm. Mm. W- would that be a credit to the student or to the, to the person who did it? From, from afar, no? approaching, uh, coming in into the exhibit room, mm-hmm. I knew that they were photographs or mm-hmm. photos. No? But from afar, somehow, it looked it's like a painting. painting. Mm-hmm. And then on closer look, yeah, on closer look, wow, it's a mm-hmm. photograph. And then I conversed with some of the student, uh, students who were there for the exhibit and mm-hmm. also their works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. So, yeah. Well, it goes to show perhaps that uh, photography was only the medium, okay. but the students were able to, number one, I think there were different formats. Mm-hmm. There were photographs on just paper, normal paper, and very fine print, but also on canvas. Yeah. So the students were able to discover the different aspects uh, that photography can take the viewer's eye in looking at it and it's not just an image on a screen anymore i see yeah. so I, I think that was where the where the you know the, the amazement came in no? when yes. i saw it because okay. yeah there were different types of paper yes. I, I touched them no? mm. some of the materials that they used Oh, and I understand that they printed also uh, it themselves or something? Yes, they had to discover where in Dumaguete can they have it printed. And I think the most important was, in very short time, we were able to make the students uh, produce actual work okay. and set it in a space instead of, and change their experience of images that for two years okay. was digital yeah, yes, and yes, yes. on a screen. This time, a screen on yes. a screen. Oh. This time, they're actually, you know, uh, yes, it, with certain different scale and yes. different uh, materials. textures yeah. and yeah. materials. Because of the technology also. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because so, there are so many outputs yeah. Yeah. that you can do now. Yes. You can uh, you can print on on cloth and mm-hmm. canvas okay. on textile. Yeah. And you can also print on substrate. Yes. Directly. Yes. Okay. So these are these are made available to the now students. Now with technology, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, very good, very but good. But the sheer experience yes. of them seeing their photographs right. on uh, some you know piece of I paper know, know, yes. made them in, uh, realize yes. that what they take every day on a very basic yeah. uh, okay. uh, tool like the cell phone looks completely different yeah. when uh, produced yes. in. Physical form. A- and can be magnified, like mm-hmm. uh, how the yeah. exhibit went. No, mm-hmm. yes, okay, yeah. So we shall be talking once more with our friends, Miss Sandra Kwan, and we were really uh, like uh, got got into an interesting conversation already. And of course, Mr. Babu Wenceslau. After we pause for a break, and uh, we move on to our second segment. We will be right back, friends. <music> Once again, friends on iGreyhound, and we are still speaking and having a nice, interesting conversation with Ms. Sandra Palomar Juan, the project uh, program director of the Fine Arts Department of Foundation University, and of course with Mr. Babu Wenceslau, a founding instructor of the Fine Arts program. So it's been a good number of years ago 2008, 2006, Babu. 2008, I think. It must be 2008 when yeah. you started the program. When we started the program. Wow, yeah. and uh, you had, uh, well, for purposes of you know uh, history and uh, history telling and so on. How many students were there then? Uh, uh, pioneering. 
Maybe six or okay. eight. Well, that's a good number yeah. for a program that uh, is a pioneer in Dumaguete and in Negros Oriental. Yes. You said that, yes. no? Yeah, very good. And it started here at Foundation yes. University. Yes. And then now, Miss Sandra, uh, we have grown into like uh, 18 or so students. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a good number as well, no? Yes. Now, uh, this one, because I, I have I met up? Yeah, I have met. Some of your students, as I mentioned, no, in Project Uno, the exhibit of students of uh, fine arts, and uh, I believe our Hara, Hara sa FU of Kasdapa, mm -hmm. who represented us. No? She's a fine arts uh, student mm -hmm. as well. Uh, let me see. Where do these students uh, like come from? Not really physically, but like their interests. Why did they go into fine arts? Uh, I suppose you may have talked to them initially before they proceeded with their enrollment. I think we do that here at Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, why did they enroll here? Uh, why did they enroll in your program and so on? Uh, a, a, something like a perspective of your students' profile. Mm -hmm. A lot of them actually were already um, studying the arts mm -hmm. in high school. Oh. So their interest really comes uh, innately you know, because they want to do the arts. So immediately from high school, they transferred to the college. There are a few who are transferees. Uh, some are, right now, one is from architecture. And they say that uh, they really wanted to do fine arts in the very beginning okay. and of course uh, with pressure from their peers or from family they thought that they would probably just do one course first and do the fine arts as a second course so we have that kind of a demographic as well yeah. Uh, yes. So second courses? Second yes. courses? I yes. Wow! No? So they finished a degree program first and then uh, knowing that they have this love no? mm -hmm. for the arts or for fine arts, then they went into fine arts as mm -hmm. a second degree program. Mm -hmm. Wow, yes. interesting. No? And how I wish people can also do that, no? like uh, maybe satisfy what their parents want them to take <laughs> up <laughs> and then later on pursue their particular interests. Yeah, for, for Babu, I know that you are, both of you in fact are graduates of fine arts, right? Yes. Uh, but Babu also has really been very active in the art scene. No? Um, you have had a number of exhibits, yes, exhibitions as mm. well, uh, locally and even outside of Dumaguete. You have been a um, project director, a facilitator, and so on. But uh, would you say that, because after all, we're, we're also uh, informing and uh, educating our people no? and our televiewers as well, as to the can I call it being a lucrative profession, yeah, uh, being in the arts? Or can we combine um, arts and at the same time profit or something? Because I think many among our, our artists are also doing fine and doing very well as far as uh, profitability. Forgive me for the term, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that's, it's, it's, uh, it's an apprehension, I think. Uh, for, for, for for the parents, ah, okay. it's it's a you know I mean a lot of parents don't okay. really think that it's a it's a course that they would like to invest on uh -huh. for their yes. for their kids because yes. they think that uh, they'll be economically challenged yes, when they okay. when they're done or maybe supporting but, the, the the children no? maybe until yes, uh, but it really all depends I mean the the industry is so broad now. yes yes. It's very, very big. Uh, the creative industry, the visual industry is very, very big. Mm -hmm. All the more with, you know, with with the internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, everything is very visual. You will have to have, you know, everything is designed. In, in contemporary life, everything yes, yes, is yes. designed. Everything is built up. Everything is, is uh, you know, created. And, and consciously, visually, consciously created. You know? So there is a very big industry out there. And uh, you study the fine arts, you don't actually just do painting. You know, there are yes. so many, especially here in foundation, mm -hmm. we try and cover as many disciplines as we can. Uh, like what Sandra mentioned, you know, we want to be very 
student centered. So we try and and uh, help them out with their own, you know, personal creative directions that they want to do. So if uh, we have students right now, we have seniors right now who want to do animation. Uh, yes, they want to do animation. That's field, yeah, right? it's another field. Yeah. So, but uh, so we try and and help them out with that. You know, um, we've we've had uh, very successful uh, yeah. graduates also who ended up who are now working in the yes. field of animation are quite right. successful yes. and yes. and um, they're working on their own. Ooh. They're working on their own time. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And uh, right. we even had one Joaira uh, mm-hmm. who sent herself to school yeah. doing projects uh, okay. doing animation and doing illustration uh, for a for a, um, an international Japanese company and she was sending herself to school mm. she finished okay. uh, really on her own accord so she was uh, uh, a student and working at the and same working time. online wow. at the same time yeah. so okay. the, it's it's you know I mean yes the creativity and I think Entrepreneurship, they're mm-hmm. kind of like okay. very yeah. similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Or they go together. They go together. Uh, right. Sandra was uh, saying she was teaching art management. Okay. Yes, yeah. you need that also. You need to have management yeah. skills right. in creativity. Uh, you have to be very professional. I mean, some people think that, you know, I mean, they have this very romantic idea of of, uh, art, of, of or, an art, the artist uh, you know it's yes. true you know yes, you, you yes. Look, I mean yeah you look yeah. for but you look for it you mm-hmm. research for that actually it's not just you wait for inspiration yeah it, it's yeah it's floating around you you know it's it's hovering above yeah. your head but you just don't wait for it to drop right, right, because right. you know uh, even if there's gravity ideas that just don't fall off yeah. <laughs> of, you know the the air. So you really have to reach out for these things, and it's a lot of work. Yeah. So, and it's work. Really, it's work. So, right. so it's a it's a profession. Really. It is. Oh, yeah. it is, and it, it depends also on the amount of work that you do. Yeah. If you dedicate, you know, your time to a certain thing, and of course, you know, you will reap whatever it is that you sow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's work and discipline. Mm. In fact, no, mm. listening to Babu again, I mean, like. No one can wait for you not to finish a deadline. For example, if you were given a deadline by somebody who commissioned you to do some work, my goodness, you have to like, like, like in writing, you say you publish or perish or something. No? Yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's still yeah, work. Discipline. But yeah, yeah, that's true. Deadlines yes, are yes. deadlines, and you have to right. beat it. You have right. to, you have to deal with clients, okay. yeah. and you have to clients also. I mean, when you're doing commissions, for instance, you have to right. really talk to your clients. Okay. So that is where the management comes that in and the, the entrepreneurship skills in, of yes. a particular person. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's part of the curriculum in fine arts. You have something like entrepreneurship, arts art management, and so on. Yes, yeah. 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 That and, is part. yeah. And then I think this is also one opportune time where Sandra can give us, uh, Miss Sandra can give us a little mm-hmm. background on her work at the Met, the Metropolitan Museum, Museum of Manila. Manila. Um, you were the executive director in 2012 mm-hmm. and uh, prior to that, you also worked in or, or uh, got your degree in Paris, France. No? Mm-hmm. So uh, all of these things that was 2012, not too long ago, of course. No, if I may put it that uh, in that particular aspect. But again, I'll, I'd like to go back again to my initial question: How far have we have we gone as far as the art industry, art scene, and so on? Judging from your uh, experiences with contemporary artists, artists from coming from all over, really, while being at the Metropolitan Museum? Um, well, I am within the realm of contemporary art. Uh, that practice, uh, I cannot say changes, because, you know, a decade from now, it will still be contemporary oh. art, but for another generation. Yes, yes, yes. But perhaps what I can say has changed, mm-hmm. no, is our um, understanding of um, the word fine arts. Okay. Yeah. Because little by little, you know, in Paris, I was also in the school of fine arts. Yeah. And it was 
uh, that school's curriculum that uh, was given to our uh, universities, our first universities that had fine arts programs. So we are following a studio-based program. What has changed is that technology, um, economy as well, has given uh, other demands for fine artists. Mm -hmm. And our government also has recognized that recently because of the law that will support what we call the creative industry. Okay. And if we understand that, mm -hmm. um, fine arts is really just one of the yes. many branches yes. of the creative, of industry. creative industry. And uh, at the Met, being a museum of yeah. uh, contemporary art, uh, we were already beginning to showcase uh, these the, 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 the complexity of understanding the creative industries by taking into consideration art within fashion, art mm -hmm. in um, the, for example, the automotive industry, I wow. mean, or even yeah. just, uh, well, then, of course, uh, IT, mm -hmm. uh, and eventually information technology. information technology, and what do we have? We have uh, uh, virtual reality mm -hmm. artworks, yes. uh, now we mm -hmm. talk about uh, uh, NFTs, mm -hmm. and uh, this definitely are challenges for uh, our students whose understanding of the fine arts are still perhaps you know, very traditional. Mm -hmm. But I think this is where it is important for us yeah. to remain a studio-based uh, practice mm -hmm. and uh, university as well, uh, program as well, because what we are teaching is not how art is going to be lucrative mm. we are not also teaching necessarily how you will be professional mm -hmm. because i think each artist yeah. uh, will decide for him or herself yeah. how what they will make out of their skill not everything is compatible to that person um, what we do teach are the basic techniques yeah. that will make you arrive at that deadline mm -hmm. you know that will make you arrive at a certain level of skill okay. that no one else mm -hmm. can do and uh, that's what actually we see from our graduates and one of them he mentioned is in the animation industry mm -hmm. i remember looking through um, a thesis mm -hmm. and that same person actually graduated with a thesis in art therapy mm -hmm. for oh. children and she was Art as a form of therapy, therapy no. yes, for children. She had a project where she conducted workshops mm -hmm. in certain communities uh, here in Dumaguete, and she was awarded at the time. I think that was 2012, mm -hmm. uh, an outstanding award for um, a student. Yeah. So it was here in FU. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Great. And we didn't know that or she probably didn't know that she would be making it in the animation yes, industry yes, today yes. Uh, however you know, she's the one who decided what to do with the skill that she yes. was given uh, she she was um directed to, yes, yes. to, to uh, develop and uh and then again i think really it's to be able to i think the last you know, importance of uh, our presence and what has changed from my perspective um, is that there are more networks and connections mm -hmm. because information is faster. Yeah, yes, yes, today, no? It takes, for example, just a message to somebody you don't know, but because they're interested in coming to the Magete yeah. to, you know, share, maybe give a workshop, yes, yes, that yes. it opens up wow. opportunities. Yeah. Um, so there are there are uh, varied no? and mm -hmm. diverse opportunities open for the fine arts graduates mm -hmm. and that's yeah. very important because to feel, no? I think yeah. uh, in in the last couple of years also uh, the program has um, I think we've, we've created very good links and networks yes. Yes. Uh, internationally and locally and also also you know with the network that we also have yes. over the years over the years right, right. we've brought that into the program and i think we've done several projects also over the years yeah.
Okay. Uh, using now, these yeah. networks. Right. Now that we're talking into the and then delving into your curriculum, no? of course, um, any institution or higher education institution in the Philippines is being well governed and directed by the Commission on Higher Education of the Philippines. And I understand that you now have a something like a CHED memorandum order that uh, we follow as far as the curriculum is concerned. Perhaps mm -hmm. this is uh, one time where you can inform our televiewers as well where we are at now in this particular uh, curricula or curriculum that we may be following. Mm. We're actually we're following the the current one now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. But we still have, I think, two or three more students oh. that are still uh, uh, they're still graduating yes. and uh, are still going to uh, graduate based on the old right. Yeah. The, yeah. The old, yeah. Uh, so, so program. Yeah. So now any program, any institution, in fact, for that matter, some students follow the so-called old curriculum mm. and then they seek way into the so-called mm. new curriculum. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Uh, but most of our students, especially the first year, I think, in the transfers, now follow the the new the new curriculum. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's very interesting. Is there a marked difference between the old curriculum and the new curriculum, or perhaps in your experience, what have been added? Uh, I think they're just the definitions. Ah, I think okay. it's more. I think it's more. Uh, it's more defined, okay. I guess, uh, programs, but. Again, the, the courses in, in the studio arts are always, you know, described yes, broadly, yes. Yeah. so that you know each, uh, so that you can still have a bit of autonomy on, on what on the, the design of your yeah. syllabus. Yes, mm. that's right. Uh, you, Miss Sandra mentioned, and I think also Babu mentioned about being studio based. What does mm. that mean? Um, you know, it's typical to have an artist who is good at his craft and who works, who needs to work in a studio, okay. where everything that's in that studio refers to his uh, practice. Okay. And um, we, I imagine that uh, we can provide the students, for example, a studio that, and we do have that already now. Um, that focuses in ceramics, mm -hmm. for example, we have a clay lab facility, mm -hmm. and uh, that at least we can identify mm -hmm. as a studio for the practice okay. of ceramics. ceramics. And ceramics. that's the biggest, I think, in the Visayas. Ah, mm -hmm. we have it here already. Yeah, yes. it here. We so have two big specific. kilns, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, it can be taught, a studio can be taught by different teachers, but it's also good to actually perhaps identify with uh, practicing artists whose uh, reputation, if I must say, will also lend a certain uh, a sense of um, credibility, credibility oh, to the school. Yeah. Okay. So we would like to be working with, uh, I wouldn't call them professors, I'd rather call yeah. them as artists. Artists, yeah, yes. Who who practice and it's through the demonstration of their uh, practice that the students will learn. Yes, yes. So uh, I think it's important that we consider also that we're not just teaching, but we are immersing yes. the students. That's a, that's a good word. Yeah, immersing. In, in the practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if, for example, we, of course, we would love to have uh, a lot of studios to to try for the students to, to try, try all yes, types okay. of uh, medium yeah, and uh, yeah. formats mm -hmm. but if that's not possible mm -hmm. we could also probably think and this I'm already thinking for the program a way of uh, assigning our students based on their interest mm -hmm. in the studio of an artist outside ah, of the school okay. Yes, and yes. in this way, it's like an OJT. Yeah, it's like an internship program yes. no, or immersion, oh, immersion. program. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, because that's also actually included in the new Cur yeah, curriculum. curriculum. Yes. Okay. So that students can go on an immersion mm -hmm. stage or mm -hmm. internship or OJT or something. Yes. But I don't want to call it as OJT because these are you know fine art students. Yeah. Apprenticeships. They go to artists. Yeah, internship perhaps or maybe or immersion apprenticeship. or apprenticeship or maybe immersion. Yes. The immersion themselves into the works of these artists because yes. we have a number of galleries here right yes. uh, managed and I think owned as well by our local artists yes, yes. and then yeah uh, yeah very quickly um, 
there is a, a genre also called performance art. I think you are into that as well, Miss Sandra. Yes. Is, is, that's, that performance art would mean that you're not uh, really static in one particular place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Maybe we can uh, acquaint our televiewers as well. Uh, on well, performance art. Yeah. we've had a few students who are interested in that format. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. There are actually quite a lot of artists from Dumaguete who practice and who do performance oh, art. Yes, 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 uh, yes. That happens in the galleries mm -hmm. actually here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it provides the, the artist a sense of freedom from just sticking to one particular yes, medium. Yes, yes. So you will find uh, an artist not necessarily just focused on drawing but mm -hmm. also does performance oh. and mixes both, both. these yeah. disciplines. Mm -hmm or two or three okay. other disciplines all together. Is it, uh, well, again, from a layman's point of view, is it difficult to do that? Uh, combining both uh, formats or, I wonder, performance mm, and then, uh, yeah. I wonder. Or, or it's interesting, it's not really okay, difficult. Not difficult. Or a happy mix, maybe. Mm? A happy mix of both. Yeah. Interesting, I, no? I would think that the, Current generation look for that. Okay. Mm. They are really more interested in uh, mixing genres, okay. not sticking in one. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Not like before, where you would okay. specialize <laughs> just in one particular yeah. um, group, yeah. medium. Group. Yes. Yeah. I think performance art also is. A, it's a, it's easier for this generation to. Mm -hmm understand it mm -hmm. because okay. it's it's ephemeral it's very okay. in the moment yes yes kind of art yeah. sometimes it's spontaneous okay know? it doesn't have to be based on anything yes right? so it's very spontaneous it could be almost equivalent to TikTok or something yeah. like that. or something like uh, <laughs> on on stage they call it something like an improv no yeah, improv. Oh, it yes. is yes, yes. yes. And, and but it's not really theater Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, but uh, maybe the the counterpart uh, in theater would be the improv yes, type, uh, no? Oh, but like it's that. art, art, but performance it, uh, art. It's, it's okay. not theater. Mm -hmm. it's, it, you can't actually also say that it, it belongs to that. Oh, oh, you no, can no, define no. it as theater. Yes, it's yes. really performance art. Yes, performance itself. art, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, very quickly again, do, do we have that in Dumaguete uh, now? The, the performance uh, artists? The performance so in... I and think I, I was able to swatch, I think, only one. Ras Algarita did uh -huh. it. Uh, I did one performance in the opening. I think so. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's did one really performance awesome. in the opening oh. of the of Asanamo yes. in oh, okay. Mugna yes. Gallery. Oh. Recent, solo recent solo show. Recent solo show. Yes, yeah. yes right, yeah. right. Very, very short yeah. performance. So, in other words, um, the art scene is alive and well in Dumaguete, mm -hmm. in the province. Mm -hmm. um, in of course Foundation University, no? uh, spearheaded by Foundation University Fine Arts Department, and again, uh, well, like like uh, cascading no? to Dumaguete City and uh, other municipalities in the province of Metros Oriental. So that's really great. And then very qu a quick question for me, Sandra, uh, you something like you you had chosen to live in Dumaguete now. Mm -hmm. uh, you had said that because mm -hmm. of the diverse culture and uh, of course the people as well. Do, do you find it um, nice and fun so far? Uh, it's uh, peaceful. Okay, yeah. Uh, here. <laughs> for any artist, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's heaven wow. to have uh, the sun, the, okay. the sky, the sea all together in one and then also very um, talented yes. people. Okay. Very curious, I yeah. think, also. Very curious artists. And a very, I, I would also like to point out, very, I think, understanding, very sheltering community. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I and, think that is a strength. Yeah. I yes. think, and it's yeah. very, you know, it's 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 just right that the mm. the, the School of Fine Arts yes. in Foundation University is in, I mean, it, we're in Dumaguete City. Yes, you know, right. It's just really the perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Place for that. Sh sheltering and maybe accepting mm -hmm. no? uh -huh. for the creatives, right? Uh, for the creatives, yeah. And uh, as you had mentioned, as both of you had mentioned, we, we see a sweltering of um, galleries here mm -hmm. and there, right? And and people who I said have simply just come out in the open mm -hmm. and discovered that they had this talent, mm -hmm. Allah, no? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know of several who who thought that they did not have this particular talent, but now they sell. 
Mm-hmm. They're paintings and works and other works of art. Wow, amazing. Yeah. So, my gosh, this has truly been a very nice conversation. Uh, I'm pretty certain that I hope we can invite you again for another episode. But at least for this episode, Miss Sandra and uh, Sir Babu, you can um, invite our televiewers, those who are watching us from all over the world. Uh, after all, we're soon going to open our second semester. So, I think this would be an opportunity time. First, to our uh, program chair of the department of Fine Arts, Ms. Sandra Kwan. I'd like to invite you, if you're in Dumaguete, to visit the, uh, from, uh, the Fine Arts Program Studio and our Clay Lab facility. That will be one way for you to discover what we do, who we are, and perhaps how we can collaborate. So, Great. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you very much. And then, Babu? I... Um... If you're considering uh, a life in the creative industry, uh, drop by Foundation University, um, give us a look, uh, visit our studios, our facilities. I'm sure um, we can help you with whatever direction creative uh, creative exploration that you want to do. Wow, that's an open invitation to everyone out there, whether you may young be young or yeah, old. Young or old, yes. <laughs> employed or unemployed, employed, yes. yes. Or perhaps a uh, first degree courser mm-hmm. or second degree courser. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to ask your permission from your parents. After all, if you're a second degree courser, then go to the Fine Arts uh, Program of Foundation University. Thank you once again, Miss Sandra, for taking time. Of course, uh, after all, we had wanted really to uh, like enrich the program through a medium such as this. And then thank you, uh, Babu, for this second time around uh, on iGreyhound. Thank you once again. So with that, friends, we bring to a close another episode of iGreyhound. We hope to see you again in our future episodes. And please don't forget, we have our replays every Friday and Saturday from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 3 in the afternoon on Channel 6 of Phil Products TV Dumaguete. And yes, we are also being streamed live on the official Facebook page of Foundation University. Thank you once again to my stylist, Miss Nicole Kalumpang, for my beautiful clothes uh, on the show. And uh, as always, thank you very much. And we hope to see you again in our future episodes. This has been Cecile Henobe bidding everyone a pleasant evening. <music>